of knowledge is one of the greatest gifts that we have as human beings. Pow! Boom. Are you? My name is Carly Zanoni. I'm so excited to be here today um, demoing one of my favorite color techniques. Super easy, very quick express service. But the other thing I want to talk to you about today is the Metal Detox System from L'Oreal. And I'm going to go through that today as I kind of walk you through my color technique and how I would use it. I want to jump right in and get started right off the bat. Um, real quick though, if you guys have any questions while this is happening, please type them below in the box. I'm going to answer them. Um, and I have some people helping me out today who are going to read the questions. So if you guys have any questions, let me know real quick. What I'm going to be doing is taking this side of my beautiful girl here. Um, I'm going to be taking her to more of like a lived in, um, just dimensional kind of like rooted look here in one process. I'm going to do a root melt and I'm going to do a wet balayage on her ends. So Really simple process. The first thing I'm gonna do though is start by spraying on, let me see the best way that you guys can see this, is step one of the Metal Detox system. Um, it's a pre-treatment and it goes on dry hair before you color it. So I'm gonna spray it on, just kind of taking small-ish sections where I can get through the entire thing um, with a few sprays. Spray it on there and while I am mixing up my color, um, this is just going to kind of soak into the hair. So the metal detox system is awesome because metal is ending up in our hair and we're kind of figuring this out and metal is in water. So certain, um, certain areas in the world have more metal than others. Some, in some areas, the concentration of metal in water is up to like 90%. So Originally, the thought was that this wasn't really getting into the hair. It was kind of resting on the hair. It wasn't really an issue. But now we've kind of realized, like, it's actually penetrating the deeper levels of inside of your hair shaft and can definitely affect color and cause breakage. So Metal Detox is a preventative for that. Um, L'Oreal has kind of engineered or, pat or figured out this, um, this molecule called glycoamine, which isolates the uh isolates the metal and makes it so that it breaks down the metal so that color does not interfere with it and it will not affect your color surfaces so i sprayed the metal detox prep spray on it i'm actually going to dampen her hair with water because my whole color technique is going to be done on damp hair so i'm going to go ahead and spray a little bit of water on here if you were in the salon you could absolutely do this in a shampoo bowl like wet her hair first and then come back and apply this color technique. Um, but for the purpose of this live, I am going to just spray it right here and make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to begin by using, like I said, this is a, this is an express service. I could do this entire service and have my client out the door probably in under two hours, depending on a certain scenario. But this is a great option for somebody who is too blonde, they wanna have a little bit more root and dimension, um, or maybe they're overly highlighted, like they just have lost all of their dimension, or even if somebody's like a natural, like lighter level, like a natural seven, eight, and they wanna deepen their roots and brighten their ends, this is a great option for that. Hey Carly, so, this is John with uh, Behind the Chair, and. We are already getting questions. Okay. Uh, one of um, the first one is from Teresa asking, uh, how much spray is needing to saturate in your opinion? So my say would be like, you don't want it to feel drenched. Um, you just want it to kind of feel like even less than it would feel like if you had, had wet the client's hair and brought her back and towel dried her, maybe even a little bit less than that. Um, just enough so that you can like see that the, the hair does look damp. It doesn't look dry anymore, but you don't need to be drenching their hair by any means with, with the, with the uh, prep spray. Okay. The next question is from Christine. It says, 
Would this work for using our professional chemicals over previous home metallic salt products? Um, kind of. It, I mean, it, it definitely works to help prevent future damage. So this is different than, say, like a clarifying um, treatment that you would do pre-color. This is more of like a preventative thing and helps... It's, it's not really going to affect the old color that's on your hair as far as if you're asking, like, if you kind of want to help remove that, which I think is kind of what I'm getting from that question. Um, but maybe clarify a little bit for me. But it's it's a little bit different than, like, say, a clarifying treatment to kind of clean off the hair. Okay. Another question here is, uh, wh why apply this technique on wet hair instead of dry? Or is there a difference? Yes. Awesome question. I love doing this on wet hair because for me, um, I just feel like I can get such a better blend with my root melt and my wet balayage. You could, you could do this on dry hair. There's no saying you absolutely can't, but with what I'm going to do, so I'm, this is a demi-permanent color I'm applying right now. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to do wet balayage in the ends. I would say for me, it's just the blending is so much easier. The water kind of dilutes your product a little bit, makes it a little bit easier um, to like comb through, makes it a little bit more slippery. And I feel like you can eliminate a lot more of those harsh lines um, when you're doing a, a, like a melting technique like this, but kind of personal preference for sure. And real quick, I'll just tell you guys what I'm using. I'm using Deolite, L'Oreal Deolite. Um, I'm using 5N and six three so the n is a natural and the three is gold so her base color is i mean it's a little bit warm barely but she's pretty light she's like a natural level eight ish so i want to make sure i add a little bit of warmth in there um so that it doesn't look too too ashy too too like flat but of course, like most clients, she doesn't want a ton of warmth. So, you know, I my, my formula is about two parts of 5N to one part 5-3. And I'm just moving up the back of the head here, taking horizontal sections. If you had an assistant, they could certainly hold this part of the hair, which would be helpful. But if you don't, just clip it back up out of the way. I'm kind of dragging this down. Um, and I'm dragging it down further in the back because I want to create that illusion of just deeper roots and more dimension throughout the back. Once I get up to the top, I'm going to not drag it down quite as far because I want it to be a little bit brighter up there at the top. Okay, we have a couple more questions. Um, Mila asked, uh, does it work for every coloring service or only blonding? Great question. You could do every coloring service. Um, this would be a helpful, like, kind of treatment for. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that it works with other products aside from L'Oreal. You could use this with your Wella color. You could use this with your Schwarzkopf color, with your Red King color. It's all, it would be helpful for all, um, all color systems. And it doesn't have to just be with L'Oreal. Okay. Another question. Uh, if your client needed gray coverage, would you still apply wet? You could. So there's a couple options for gray coverage, and I'm so glad you asked that. So one option, if your client is okay with blending their color, their gray, I'm sorry, if they're okay with blending their gray, like they are not going to freak out if there's one gray hair left, um, and it's kind of more like dimensional and blended as opposed to completely 100% covered with like an opaque permanent color. You could still do this on wet hair, and I would use something more like Dia Richesse that you can get a little bit more coverage with. Um, and I mean, on dry hair, you're going to get better coverage, but you will still probably get pretty decent coverage, even if you do this on wet hair with the demi permanent. Now, say you had somebody that has gray hair, it's super resistant. They're absolutely adamant that they want every single gray hair gone. In that case, I would probably do. Um, the roots probably on dry hair and I would maybe dampen the ends and do a little bit of wet balayaging on the ends um, while that permanent root color is processing. And Lisa from Winnipeg asks, do you charge for this service or are you doing this to make your job easier and look fabulous? Um, 
I would charge for the service um, for sure. I mean, this is kind of like a specialty color service. It's, you know, there's no foiling involved, which is nice because it makes it much quicker. But this is still definitely something that's kind of like a like a specialty service, right? So yeah, I would definitely I would definitely charge for this for sure. I hope I answered that well. I think you did. Okay. Uh, last question so far. Can you use for relaxer? Um, can you use for relaxer? I th you might mean if somebody has a relaxer on their hair, could you use metal detox? I think that's what you're maybe getting at. I think at. so. Um, I don't see why not. Absolutely. I think it would be totally fine. Again, because this is like a... This is something totally new that is a little bit, I feel like when new, like extremely innovative products like this come on the market, it's a little bit hard to wrap our brain around it. Like, what is this? This is different than like your bond builders or like your Malibu treatment or something like that. That's, you know, bond builders are rebuilding bonds in the hair that are broken from light our chemical services. And then something like a Malibu treatment is more clarifying to get all the old junk off your hair. Um, this metal detox is again it's only targeting like the metals in your hair which do react with chemical services that we do do react with color it can cause breakage so it's almost just it's a different concept that kind of sounds weird and could be challenging to wrap your brain around so uh, but i i think you could totally use it with a relaxer i don't see why not for sure uh, what formulation tips do you suggest for avoiding unwanted warmth or uh, splotchy color? Great question. Um, unwanted warmth is tough because in a situation like this, you know, where she is already starting out fairly cool on her roots, um, and this could be, I mean, this could be a natural color, or if somebody has super, you know, porous, cool toned highlights, you'd run into the same thing. So as far as unwanted warmth in a situation like this, you know, you have to add a little bit of warmth in so that their, um, their hair doesn't get gray, muddy, and ashy. But I would say just finding a good balance is crucial. And honestly, it really all goes back to the color wheel and just knowing what kind of neutralizes what. But in a situation like this where you're going darker, it's almost like crucial to add a little bit of warmth. I always talk about that with my clients though, so that they're not surprised. Like I will explain the situation and tell them, look, we have, um, you know, you have a lot of cool tones in your hair. Now, if I just put cool tones all over them again, I know you don't want to see warmth, but it's going to look muddy. It's going to look gray. We've essentially eliminated all the natural pigment that's in your hair by bleaching it. And I have to go back and put some of that pigment in. So I kind of break it down to them and try and help them to understand. So now that I've gotten to the side of the head here, um, this more front section, I am pulling the hair back. I'm taking vertical sections, pulling the hair back away from the face. I just find this to be the easiest option when I'm working by myself because I don't have to like flip the hair over here, worry about this end getting on that dark root over there. Um, so to me, this is the easiest way to do it. You certainly could go horizontal sections up like this, but again, then you're flipping a lot of this hair over and in a real life salon situation, you'd have your dark root color on this side of the head as well. So for me, this is the easiest way to do it. Okay. I have a question from, uh, Donna. And I'll read it as worded. Uh, it says, explain how far down the application of deposit, one inch or two inches? So it varies. So like in the back back here, and you'll be able to see as it starts to oxidize a little bit more, it kind of doesn't look like anything right now, but I'm essentially wanting to create like a little bit of a teardrop effect. So I'm gonna just paint as I see like where I want it to go. Um, don't overthink it. I think as hairstylists, we really complicate stuff. And I'm literally just bringing it down less far up here towards the face. And then in these back sections, I brought it down a little bit more so that she's rootier in the back. Also, all these sections under here where I pulled it down, those are going to kind of play as like and look kind of like low lights almost because I don't want to really go through and do a ton of low lights on here because this is just a quick express service. So I'm essentially pulling it down further in the back and leaving it up higher towards the face. 
Okay, and then another one says, uh, <clears throat> a few of their clients have well water and it seems to affect their highlights. Would the metal detox lift some of that out? Um, it will definitely help to, I don't know that it would necessarily lift, you're probably talking about like kind of a murky like look on the hair or like it gets kind of a weird tinge. It will definitely probably help eliminate something, um, a little bit of that for sure. But I would say it will just be awesome for like continuing down the roads when you, when you do keep highlighting your hair, like it will continue to um, prevent those metals from affecting her color. So yeah, it might help a little bit with, with what's on there now for sure. But ultimately it's going to be huge with helping to eliminate those metals from, from creating, you know, build up on the hair and affecting the color service. Okay, so now I'm kind of at the money piece area of her hair. And this is like a, let's see, we've got about like an inch section here, probably maybe a little bit less than an inch. Once I get to this section, I am barely going to tap that root color on there. Um, I am just going to gently tap it, not drag it down too far, because I want the color, her blonde, to stay up higher around her face. Most clients want that. I feel like, especially if you're dealing with a blonde who is just dabbling with going dark and going a little bit rootier even, I would say your best option is to leave the blonde up higher around their face. So they don't just feel so like shell shocked all of a sudden when they go dark. So I'm barely tapping that on. I'm using a comb, a wide tooth comb. Um, and you've seen me dragging this down on each section after every couple sections, I would say, actually, um, this comb, I feel like can totally transform your melting. I mean, this one is my favorite, but a wide tooth comb, if it's a smaller, like, um, you know, finer tooth comb, it just moves the product around too much. The point of this comb is to essentially is to essentially break up a line of demarcation, but to not, not really move it down too far. Let me see how I can do this. So you guys can see, I'm just literally tapping it on there, on those front money piece sections. Stephanie wants to know specifically what comb is that? Yes, so it's called a Tangle Tamer comb. It's like $3 or something. It's my favorite comb ever. Um, I am obsessed with it, so I get it on Amazon, so that's my favorite, but most brands have a comb that's similar, but that one is my, my personal fave. So just tapping that uh, root melt on right there, and I think someone else asked earlier about pre preventing splotchiness, which I kind of brushed over and didn't get to, but that's a big thing that is worth discussing. In a situation like this, especially when somebody is so light, you do really want to make sure that you can blend it well so that you can end up like, kind of show you guys over here, so that you can end up with, it's a little bit hard to see, but like a smooth transition so that you don't have any splotchiness or blotchiness on her ends, especially. Um, so one of my biggest helping, one of the things that helps me the most is this comb for sure, like I already mentioned. Um, the other thing is the water. The water will help you a ton. I think it's a lot easier for color to like transfer um, on dry hair from dark to light than it is on wet hair. And the next thing is just not touching the hair too much. Like I find that a lot of times we'll put on a root melt and then keep like messing with it and keep going back and going back. But I think that you are better off putting it on, you comb through it once, you blend it, and then you just let it sit. Not like all this constant stuff if just a root melt is on there. So that is a little bit on that. I do feel like overall, though, it just kind of takes practice. It's one of those things you kind of get down a little bit better and a little bit better the more you do it. Okay, so now I'm going to start with my wet balayage. So... I am gonna start right here in the front around her face on these money pieces. I want these pieces to get the absolute lightest because they're around her face. They're what she's gonna see very first. 
they're most important to me to get light. So that's where I always start lightening is where I want it to have the most time on there. Before I do that, I'm just going to make sure that this is nice and combed and blended. And then I'm going to go in with my lightener. If you're not familiar with wet balayage, it's one of my absolute favorite techniques for brightening up somebody like this who's already, she's blonde, but she's like warm and it just kind of looks stingy. Like you can see over there, these pieces are just lighter, they're cooler. Um, but this, if she's just kind of needs a little refresh on her blonde, wet balayage is an awesome option. I'm using the Studio Blonde up to nine levels of lift, and I'm using 30 volume with this. On wet balayage, you want to probably up your developer a bit because the hair is wet, so it's diluting the product. So you want to make sure you can have plenty of lift on, on the hair. So I'm going up close to that root melt color. And again, the root melt color was Dialyte. 5N and 6.3, two parts of the 5N, one part of the 6.3. I'm getting close to that root milk color, but I'm not letting them touch. You can see there's a little area right there. That's like a little transition area. And I don't want these two colors to touch because that is going to create quite a bit of warmth in the hair. And that's not what I'm after. Okay. A couple more questions. Uh, I'm going to ask you because these are very similar. One, uh, Jenny asked, did you shampoo the hair first? And Christina asked, what uh, good shampoo and conditioner is good when you have well water? So Metal Detox comes with a shampoo and conditioner. Um, so that would be helpful to use for sure. But as far as if you're just talking about, you know, in the salon, that would be helpful. They also do have a take-home treatment, which would be helpful for sure if you have well water. Um, so I would definitely recommend that. Otherwise, though, if you, I, I always would say like a clarifying shampoo at least once every two to three washes could be helpful for somebody who has, um, who has well water. Um, but definitely the Metal Detox shampoo mask and the at-home system for Metal Detox could be a great option for that. And did I, what was the first, I think I missed the first part of that question. Did I? Or did I yeah. The first that? question is, did you shampoo the hair first? Oh, sorry. Um, you, yes. In the salon, I probably would just to clarify and get all the like gunk off their hair. Um, if they came in with pretty clean hair, I would probably skip it. Just do the, um, spray the, the metal detox pre-treatment on and then jump to either spraying it down or just wetting it in the bowl. Uh, lastly, we have uh, some uh, late joiners that are asking for the formula recap, please. For sure. Is that <laughs> yes, absolutely. So my um, my formula up here is Dialyte, L'Oreal Dialyte, and it is 5N and 6.3, and 6.3 is gold. Um, and it's two parts of the 5N to one part of the 6.3. So just a little bit of that gold in there to ensure that it doesn't look muddy or like too um just too like greenish honestly because she has her hair it has a little bit of warmth but it's it's definitely not warm enough where i going you know going that much darker where i need where i don't need to add warmth i had to add a little bit and then on the ends here i'm using studio blonde nine and i'm using um 30 volume with it and this is mixed in a little bit less than a one-to-one -one ratio this is you want the consistency to be thick because it's on wet hair. So the wet hair is going to obviously make it a little bit more slippery just by the nature of water and what it does to, to lightener. So you want your lightener to be a pretty decently thick consistency. And I'm pretty much painting like to where you can't really see through that lightener to the hair. Okay. Uh, one person's asking, uh, Stephanie's asking, uh, are you using a clay lightener for this and are you saturating all the way through? I'm using a non-clay lightener. Um, you certainly could use a clay lightener. Sometimes I prefer non-clay lighteners just because they, um, they're, they, they can be a little bit stronger possibly. So that's kind of my reasoning behind that. Um, and what was the second part of the question? I'm sorry. 
Are you saturating all the way through? Um, yes. Uh, well, I'm, I'm painting the surface on the top here and then I'm lifting it up and getting the bottom. So there's a little bit in that kind of like intersection of this of inner hair of this big section that probably is not getting touched, which will leave for a little bit of dimension. But for the most part, yeah, I'm pretty much saturating this whole this whole section, top okay. and bottom. Uh, when the air is wet, how do you make sure you're getting full saturation? So I would say by just visually looking at it, like I'll show you guys on the next section. Even you can kind of well, that one's pretty pretty well saturated already, but you can kind of look at it and see like. If the hair, if you can still see the hair through the section, you don't have enough lightener on there. Like you need to saturate, saturate enough so that the under, so that the, the lightener is what you're seeing on the hair and you are not seeing the hair through it. I'll show you guys on this next section what I mean by that. Let me turn her a little bit. Uh, Adrienne is asking, how do you determine how far to bring your shadow root down? Great question. I think a lot of factors would come into play with that. So one could be just what is going on with their hair previously. So sometimes like I use this technique a ton. If somebody has old highlights that they want to cover up and be a little bit more lived in. Um, so in that case, like if they have a ton of dimension, um, you know, they're really, they're like pretty solid up here um, with their, or sorry, they're pretty dimensional up here. They get more and more solid. Like you want to, you also want to check in with them. What, what does the client want to see? How much light do they want to see? I would say bringing it down more will kind of give that look of like a little bit of more low lights throughout the mids and ends. Um, so I would say it totally depends on the starting canvas on somebody like this, who's pretty much solid. She doesn't have a lot of dimension happening whatsoever. Um, I wanted to bring it down far, especially in the back so that I can, all this stuff down here is going to look like a low light. So it won't just look like an unintentional grown out blonde. It will look intentional because there's dimension at actually different points in the head. Hope uh, Adrienne is also asking, is it harder to tell how well it's lifting when it's wet? Does it take longer to lift being wet? Um, it's, I don't think it's necessarily harder to tell. I mean, I think as hairstylists, we're kind of used to seeing wet hair and what it looks like, you know, wet versus what it kind of is going to look like dry. I don't think it's much harder necessarily. I would say um, it definitely goes slower, which is kind of the point of this service though, right? So this service is great for somebody who, like I said, is already blonde. They're not looking to lift like five levels. This will give you a lot of warmth if you're wanting to take somebody that's like a level five to like a level 10. This is not my go-to, but this is ideal for somebody who is already blonde and wants to refresh that blonde and go a little bit brighter. So, um, so yeah, so I would say it's not necessarily harder to see. It's just, you're not really looking for tons and tons of lifts. So you're not really needing to constantly be checking it like you would with um, regular balayage or be checking for this like huge, level of lift or tons of lift uh jenny asks how long does all this stay on for and do you tone the bleach after so so typically this deal light processes for about 20 minutes usually in the salon if i'm doing this i can put this wet balayage part on in like seven minutes so then i'd probably want the whole thing to process for about 15 ish more minutes in that case the deal light could potentially be sitting on for um for a couple more minutes than 20 minutes but i've never really had an issue with that um so if you're just doing wet balayage alone though you can absolutely let this sit i usually let this sit for at least 15 to 30 minutes probably is my is my go-to um it just again you're not looking for a ton of lift here this is just this is the best option to me for those girls that come in their blonde looks dingy but a toner won't quite do it but they can't really their hair can't really take hair their hair can't really take sorry lightener and foils it's too fragile so this is a great in between because you can still get that lightness but you don't have to put it in foils where it's like get, getting heated up and it's more than a toner so it'll actually help to like lift a little bit
So I'm on my last section back here. You can see I kind of took like, I took about four to five just big sections. And that's kind of the idea with wet balayage. Like it's, it's an, this is an express service. So I'm not in here trying to like, again, I'm not trying to lift her 10 levels. I'm not trying to do a ton of, um, a ton of stuff. This is just to refresh her ends. The biggest change with this service is going to come from this root belt up here. This wet balayage is just like an added bonus. Oh, somebody did ask if I would tone the bleach after. Usually, yes. There are those cases, though, where people are just like super light already, and they have that tiny bit of yellow that comes in just from washing it, from being at home, whatever. In those cases, a lot of times I actually love the very raw lift from the wet balayage, and I don't gloss it. In a case like this where her ends were... They weren't too too. They weren't too too gold, but they were they were they were a little warm. Um, I probably will gloss it. I did gloss the other side over here, actually with um, with ten one two in Delight. So I would typically gloss it, but there's those cases where I might not. Okay, so I've gotten my my gal all painted up here. So you can see already. Now you can kind of see it's a much more. Um, you can get a much clearer visual of like that kind of teardrop effect like it's it's the darkness is starting higher up here and as I go back towards the back of the head it's just getting lower and lower so just simplify your life like paint where you want paint what you want the end result to look like don't over complicate it don't be like how am I going to move these sections around where do I need to paint blah, blah blah just simplify it you want it to be lighter around her face higher up and you want the lightness to start lower down back here so just apply your color like that. I think we just really complicate things as stylists and it's just not always super necessary. Um, so that's my best advice is just keep it, keep it really simple. Do you apply a global gloss? Yes, I probably, I would. Yes. So I'd rinse the whole thing and then probably put a gloss everywhere. If, if I was like, Oh wow, her root color is just perfect. I don't want to mess with that at all. You could totally just rinse everything and then kind of keep it on the ends. But sometimes a, a global gloss just pulls everything together like really well and you might want to put it on this top part. Also, this is a great, a global glossing situation would be a great opportunity if like you're working on somebody with really light hair and you sometimes with like filling or going darker, you have to actually, um, you know, it, it doesn't always look perfect the first time you put that gloss on. So a lot of times um, you need to, re-gloss it. So that could be a good option. If you rinse it and you're like, ooh, that still looks too hollow, do another quick root melt and then put a gloss on the mids and ends and it'll be perfect. So after this would process, I would rinse everything, possibly gloss it, use the metal detox. Um, here's the shampoo. Here's what all the bottles kind of look like so you guys can see. I would use the metal detox shampoo and the mask. And um, that would be after everything, after the glossing service, after I'm done with all the color. And then I would also send them home with the at-home care products, which would totally help. Is there any other blending that will happen in the transition area, or do you leave it alone? Mm, I usually leave it alone. Um, if it's This is a situation where, like, there's not a huge level difference. Like, this is going to be, like, a level 5, 6. This is more like a level 7. And this, I want it to be, like, a level 9. So there's not a ton of huge variation. Um, so in this case, I would leave it alone. And typically, it's fine. Because, again, I'm, I'm usually only doing this wet balayage on somebody that's already blonde. I'm not doing this on, like, a brunette or anything like that. So it would be fine um, without doing anything. And that's where my global gloss will kind of come in handy because it will kind of blend all that stuff together. Um, any other questions that you guys have for me, anything about this technique? Like I said, this is awesome for somebody like my beautiful girl here who's just all over blonde, even like a bleach retouch you could potentially do this on. If that's the case that they have roots, I would keep this root melt at the same level as their natural because the point of this route will be to erase any line of demarcation. Um, I also do this a ton on people with old highlights that um, want to go more rooty, more dimensional. This is such an easy way. Like we really get crazy and overcomplicated and think about, oh, I need to fill all this stuff and I need to do like three processes to get to this. But this is so simple and easy. Like it, you don't have to overthink it. You just do 
your root melt and then you brighten the ends and that's all there is to it. So I just encourage you to not, to, to try to not overthink it and just keep it really simple. Any other questions that you guys have for me about metal detox or about this color technique? Um, I'll tell you my formulas one more time just so you guys know. This was Deolite up here, um, L'Oreal uh, Deolite with um, two parts of 5N and one part of 6.3. 6.3 is gold. And on the ends down here, I use Studio Blonde 9 with 30 volume. And my mixing ratio was like a little bit less than one to one. Um, because I want this to be really thick. You could do this with a clay lightener. I sometimes use like to use traditional lightener. I feel like it's a little bit stronger, but you certainly could use clay lightener and that would work as well. I think that's it for questions. You crushed yeah. it. Thank you awesome. so much. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you to L'Oreal. I'm behind the chair for this opportunity. I am going to check back and post on my page. I'm sure L'Oreal maybe will too. Um, the after photo of her whole look all done. Um, you could find me on Instagram at, at the blonde, at the dot blonde dot chronicles. If you guys have any additional questions about this that come up after this is over, um, don't hesitate to reach out. I would love to chat with you guys about whatever. So thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this and I will see you guys on the next one.